Greater Good Radio. Connect, learn, heal, and grow. I started my career in New Orleans, and I didn't know that community. So it's okay, right? So it was two years there, and then I worked for ABC for six years. And then you're on a national scale. And Twitter actually came out while I was working at the White House. And so that's when I got that first taste of like, oh, she's a hack, or she's this, or whatever. You get that first kind of interaction. But social media was just sort of starting to become part of the conversation at that point. And then I came home, and the relationship is way more intimate with the audience because it is the people in your community. So you have a way bigger responsibility and people take you to task. And when I came home, so I left Hawaii when I was 14. I went to high school in the mainland. And I didn't remember like how to pronounce Hawaiian words. And I grew up on Big Island. So I came back and I remember I drove around with a friend. We drove around the island and he's like, those are the ko'olaus. This is the, right? And like, I don't know those things. I grew up on another island in a small town. Like it wasn't part of my experience. When I was very young, we grew up here, but I moved when I was five. So coming here for like sh school shopping trips, right? I remember we came, we saw Phantom of the Opera at the Blaisdell. It was like a big deal. So that's my experience of Oahu. And then now suddenly I'm required to report on this community and so the words did not come easily. If you go back and watch those early no newscasts, which of course no one does, but if you did, you can hear me like really struggling to get my mouth around all those vowels. Like I just didn't have it. And so I was very insecure about coming home and kind of being local, but not being local enough, right? And not having gone to high school here. And that's a big thing, right? That's a big part of the narrative of who you are when you're part of Hawaii. So I felt like I got a lot of criticism when I first came home and people would write the station and you'd get emails and they go to the whole newsroom. Why can't she say this? I don't like her lipstick. I don't like her hair. Who is this person, right? And I think what people don't realize is that goes to everyone you work with and it goes to your boss and it just it erodes your self-confidence. So what, what I always would do is I would write the person back directly. Hi, thank you so much for the feedback. I really appreciate that you're watching. And then they would write you back and they say, oh, I didn't realize anyone read this. I had no idea. We think you're great. We watch you every night. My husband loves you. And it's like, so this person who would never say that to your face suddenly is like called to task. I'm just lucky that I got out before it got real bad because- It's I, like trolling before trolling. <laughs> right, they yeah. just send an email. It's like email. old school trolling. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think criticism, you know, everybody deals with that. But when you're in that kind of public space, you kind of sign up for it. I don't think that when I started, because there was no social media, that I realized as much, like how much of part of the job that becomes. But I'm more aware of it now. If you resonate with Greater Good Radio, please join our community at www.greatergoodradio.com where you can get access to exclusive content and offerings. Hope to see you soon.